So what small is in relation to um, two lines is that it measures the steepness and direction. Steepness and direction of a line. So this applies to straight lines. Measures the steepness and direction. So um, as we go through some definitions of, of how we're going to do this, um, we'll look at some examples and kind of come up with some relationships. So, so first of all, the variable we use to denote slope is often m. So we're saying um, the steepness. We're talking about how far we go up or down, up or down, compared to, if we're in as a ratio, how far we go right and left. So if you think of like the slope of a, of a mountain or of a road, um, how far we go up for some horizontal distance um, or down for some horizontal distance. So it's how far we go up and down compared to right and left. Or kind of more commonly, at least in math, we say rise over run. Um, so notice too, we use the M as our variable for slope. Uh, I like to think, just think of this as because it's like a mountain, the slope of a mountain. Um, so let's look at an, an example. Okay, let's switch to blue here. So our first example, we'll use two points. We'll do 3, 1, and 8, 4. And we'll go over to the uh, our graph here. So 3, 1, and 8, 4. So if I plot those points, 3, 1, and then 8, 4, so the line that's made from going through these two points, let's see what a slope would be. So if we figure out how far we go up first, so from, and we always kind of, just like reading a book, go from left to right. So we are going to go up 3, so we went up 3, and over one, two, three, four, five, and over five. So um, for this example, our slope is three fifths. So I'll kind of jot this down under our example. So the slope is three fifths. We don't want that. Let's get rid of this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's just delete that. Um, so, so we got that by doing rise over run, how far we went up to how far we went over. Now, another way we can do this is using um, a formula that if we just have the points without having graphed it, um, there's a way to calculate the slope. So to do that, one way, one thing we have to do is we want to label our points. So 3, 1 is our first point. So just like normal, we have an X and then we have a Y when we label a point. So I'm going to call the, um, for my first point, X sub 1 and Y sub 1. Parentheses around there. So that's just denoting that it's the first point. And then underneath the 8 and the 4, this is X sub 2 and Y sub 2. So subscripts just to show that it's the first point and the second point. So if we think about I'm going to rewrite uh, how, we, how we figured out the slope with this example. When we went from a y value of 1 up to a y value of 4, we counted up 3. But really what we were doing is we were trying to figure out how far apart are 1 and 4, or how do we find the difference. So if we do 4 minus 1, that's really how we got uh, to counting up to three, 3 spaces between the 1 and the 4. Same thing when we went from um, left to right horizontally, we went from 3 to 8. So if I take the difference, 8 minus 3, I had my five spaces there. So if we generalize this back over to our formula, so next to where I have rise over run, I'm going to put another definition for slope. Next rise over run. So this is another formula, m equals um, the, basically on top, it's always going to be the difference of the y values. So just like we did 4 minus 1, that's y2 minus y1 on top. y2 minus y1. And on the bottom, 8 minus 3 we did x2 minus x1. Hmm. 
not what I wanted. X1. Okay, so there. We don't need this. Ah, there we go. Um, okay, so let's do another example. And this time let's go straight to the of uh, point formula and then then we'll graph it. So for this example, we'll do negative two three and the point one negative three. So with these two points, again, I'm just gonna jot down a little x1, y1, x2, y2, so that I can plug these into my formula. So if I, I'm just looking at the y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 formula, so on top, y2 is negative three minus y1 of three over x2 is one minus x1 is negative two. So negative three minus three on top, negative six over, uh, let's see on the bottom, this becomes a one plus two minus negative becomes a plus, um, so that is three. So negative six over three, which if we reduce that, that's negative two over one, or that's just negative two. I'm putting an or there, so because sometimes we want to leave it as negative two over one, so it's still in the form of the rise over run. Um, so let's kind of check that on our graph. So let's let's graph um, those points negative two, three, and then one negative three. Yeah, we'll connect those. Okay. So again. If I always go left to right, I'm going to go from the left point to the right point. Some better counting things going on here. So we'll remember, rise over run. So first, it's going to be down in this case. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to, that's actually like a, kind of like a negative six over positive three. So there's like we had gotten negative six over three. Now, if I switch to um, my negative two over one version, the, the reduced version, if I went down two over one, back on the line, down two over one, back on the line, down two over one, back on the line, I could keep going in that same pattern and I'll stay on the line, down two over one. I could continue my line then. So any between any two points on the line, it doesn't mean, need to be nice points, but any two points on the line, I'm always gonna get a slope of negative two over one or some version of that, whether it's bigger numbers or reduced. Um, so, so, that, that, so that's kind of how slope measures the, the direction and the steepness. So let's, let's actually talk about some patterns now. Patterns of slope. So some patterns that we were seeing. Clean up these little dots. So if we kind of compare, first of all, let's talk about the direction. So the first line, the blue line, compared to the second one, the red one. Um, so if we compare the direction, notice that the blue line is increasing. The first one. So the first one was an increasing line. And that one, let's go back up a little, the slope was three-fifths. Versus the second line is a decreasing line. The red one was a decreasing line, and we ended up with a slope of negative two. So what it relates to is the sign of the slope. So the increasing line, notice the first one, and we had a positive three-fifths. So that the fact that it's positive um, relates to that it, it's an increasing line. So it goes back and forth. If I have an increasing line, I know the slope should be positive. Or if I get a positive slope, I know it should be an increasing line. Versus decreasing we have a negative slope, like the negative two in our example. So that's a kind of a good check. And then another, I'm putting a little squiggly line here, because uh, of this, those two, I kind of relate that those go together. Um, the other thing, if we look at, regardless of the direction, the line that's steeper is the red one, the second one. And notice the, the value, regardless of it being a negative two, Two versus the three fifths is a is a smaller digit. So the the higher the absolute value. So I'm saying absolute value because regardless of whether it's negative or positive, 
the high higher the absolute value of the slope then that means it's a steeper line the steeper make sure we the steeper the line so versus a slope really close to zero would be very gradual.